So when we then start to look at this beautiful Lotus 49, we start to understand some of the features that made it so important. First of all, it was very much the cigar-shaped car of the time. Uh, you had the radiator in the nose, you had the fuel tanks alongside the car. And when you start to look at some of these details, you then start to think maybe this wasn't the template car that I believe it is when we look at the cars going forwards. At the front, you had double wishbone suspension, upper rocker arms operating coil over dampers, very conventional uh, for the time. At the rear, you have a multi-link setup again with coil over dampers directly connected to the upright. This was all very typical design for the time, but very much Lotus design. Everything's pared down to the absolute minimum. No more components are required uh, than are on the car and everything as we know with Lotus very much life to last just as long as for when the flag drops after that everything started to break. So now if we start to look at maybe some of the more details as we take the bodywork off, the wheels off, you can see disc brakes front and rear and you can see this big radiator sticking out the front which had both the water cooling for the Cosworth DFV and the uh, oil cooling at the bottom as well all rooted through the chassis with these external pipes to cool the engine we then start to get away from some of the contemporary design, we then to see quite how advanced the Lotus 49 chassis is. So from the front suspension back to the cockpit and the roll bar behind the cockpit, this is all that there was of the chassis structure. And this is what made the car such a departure and so important in Formula One design. Then to the back of that, you can see the Cosworth engine, the ZF gearbox, and you can see that the suspension spans all of these components. The uh, trailing links connecting to the chassis and then you have transverse links and the coilovers all connecting then into the gearbox with a dedicated tubular structure. So they hadn't really designed a bespoke gearbox for this car, merely added on the bits and pieces that they needed. And then when we pull the engine away, you can really see how short this chassis actually is, truncated just behind where the driver is and the front of the Cosworth engine literally bolting to just behind the driver's shoulders with shear plates at the top and then just with some studs at the bottom. And behind that, you have the gearbox which bolts directly to the Cosworth engine. All of this structure all coming together and now when you look at any single seater race car, even Le Mans type cars, they all follow this structure of truncated monocoque and then the engine bolting to that as a stressed member and the gearbox bolting to that as a stressed member, the suspension therefore then melting into everything else that you have there. This wasn't the first car to use this layout, but it was the first one to win races, to win championships and set the standard. It's a template for every race car that's gone on since. That ally to the fantastic British racing green bodywork, the minimal bodywork that attaches to the car, is what makes this one of the most significant cars in F1's history.